because God is good, and not just some of the time. God is a sure enough good God. Amen. All the time, we ought to be grateful. So good to see you this morning. Always good to be in the house of God with the people of God as we attempt to try to do the will of God in this place. Yep. Those who are our guests and friends, it is our great delight to have you visiting with us on this morning. You are our very special guest. And we know that you have been made to feel at home already. Uh, we don't recognize you uh, personally at the close of this uh, worship assembly. We'll just say to you at this point, Welcome to the Boulevard. Yeah. I want to thank, uh, as we've already mentioned, uh, the poets are traveling this morning, but we want to uh, thank Sherman for standing in for us uh, on last week. I understand he did a magnificent job, as always. And we just thank God for how he is using him in a powerful way for his great talent and ability, uh, not only in singing, but as a gospel preacher, and we just thank him uh, for, for uh, how God has blessed him in a powerful way. We, we had a wonderful time down uh, with Bluff Road Church uh, last Sunday. A uh, wonderful, wonderful day. And, uh, some Boulevard family uh, eased off down there. Amen. We were encouraged to look up and see some of our Boulevard family there. And we just thank you. For those who came for the encouragement uh, and for uh, your willingness to uh, even come down and uh, not just uh, support your preacher, but to support that great effort Amen. they put on in appreciating uh, the great man of God, their brother Lando Davis and his wife. Yeah. Uh, we, we just be appreciative to God for them and what they are doing in that area. They have a Beautiful, beautiful facility. Uh, and if you ever get an opportunity, you ought to go down and see. Uh, it's beautiful. <clears throat> For a few minutes this morning, uh, from the text that was read into your hearing, uh, Matthew chapter 5, a couple of verses, and we'll take a few thoughts. Uh, and then we'll, we'll let you go. Matthew chapter 5, verse 11, beginning, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. For a few minutes. How to be helped by your hate. <laughs> how to be helped by your haters. <clears throat> Typically, if you don't think of haters as doing anything that would be in your favor, Listen to the description of someone who is uh, a hater. They are overly competitive and seek to come out on top at any cost. They will sabotage and undermine in an effort to destroy your character. They never give a compliment, and when others are uh, appreciative of your accomplishments, they are usually the ones that matter. But what Jesus would have us to know is that if you are a born again believer, if you have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, haters can really do you some good. Because when they seek to tear you down, Jesus will build you up. When they seek to diminish you, Jesus will develop you. When they are determined to cause you pain, Jesus will will give you power. And what he shows us from this text is how to be helped by your head. A couple of things I believe he shows us that we want to try to bring out. 
from this text this morning. First of all, as we try to work our way through uh, through uh, this text, he shows us if you're going to be helped by your haters, there's first the advantages of the attacks. Then as we try to close, he shows us the abundance from the attacks. Uh, as we labor under this thought, how to be helped by your haters. The book of Matthew introduces the gospel, the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It introduces the new covenant of Christ, the law of Christ. It introduces the King of kings and Lord of lords. And in chapters 1 through 2, we see the advent or the coming of the King. Matthew 1, 20, 20, 21 but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Then there is the announcement of the king in Matthew chapter 3 uh, and 4. Matthew chapter 3 verses 11 and 13. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will Truly purge his floor and gather his feet into the garner, but uh, he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then come to Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. And beginning in chapter 5, there is the message of the king, commonly known as the Sermon on the Mount, uh, commencing with the Beatitudes, also known as uh, the, de the declarations of blessedness. And as the chapter begins, it gives a description of what Jesus did in preparation to teach the disciples. The Bible says uh, in verse, y'all, y'all like this kind of preaching, don't Y'all still sluggish from, from Thanksgiving, I guess. <laughs> The Bible says in verse 1 of Matthew chapter 5, And seeing the multitude, see, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came uh, unto him. And he opened his mouth and, and taught them a saying. And then in verses 3 through 12, he, he gives the characteristics of kingdom citizens that displays the, the, the believer's inner uh, condition. It shows the believer's deep passion for personal righteousness. Uh, uh, he, he shows that, that characteristic. He says they are poor in spirit instead of being proud in spirit. Uh, they mourn because of their anguish for sin. Uh, they are meek because of a surrendered will to Christ. They, they hunger and thirst after righteousness. They, they show mercy to those who need mercy. They are pure in heart and seek to avoid the contamination of immorality. They are peacemakers because God is the God of peace and Christ is the Prince of Peace. And as we approach uh, verse 11, our text Excuse me. Under consideration, he shows that the characteristic of the believer uh, is that uh, you will learn how to be helped by your hands. And in so doing, we will see first the advantages of the attacks. The Bible says, <clears throat> In verse 11, blessed, happy, supremely blessed, fortunate is that word blessed. Are ye, when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall 
say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. In verse 10, the persecution mentioned seems to imply, excuse me, physical persecution. But here in verse 11, it points to persecution that is more verbal in nature. He says, you ought to be happy when men revile you, when men taunt or defame your character is the word revival. When they persecute, persecute you and say all manner of evil against you, when they say all kinds of hurtful, harmful, malicious, derogatory uh, uh, things against you, your haters are really helping you. Well, well, preacher, I don't get it. How is hating on me? <clears throat> don't help me. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, uh, here's how. Take the attack as a compliment. You are somebody that Satan wants to destroy because you are a threat to him. So when folk hang on you, take it as a compliment. You somebody that the devil wants. If he ain't trying to do nothing to you, that means that he probably already got you on his side. So, 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 so when, when folk hang on when the devil is hating on you, take it as a compliment. Uh, he's trying to bring you down because there's something about you that presents a threat to him. Yeah. You become a more prayerful person. Yeah. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. There are some folks on your job. There are some folks in your family. There are some folks who sleep in the same bed with you. I ain't talking about my wife. Let's get that straight. <laughs> Look, I got to act like I'm a little slow. I got to I got to be percent. In your heart that keep you on praying ground. And so rather uh, than being bothered uh, by your haters, you need to be thankful. The Bible says rejoice. Uh, you are blessed because your haters are really helping you. When, when uh, uh, you, you take it as a compliment because uh, uh, he, he you got something to say to they, they keep you on praying ground. But then, you ought to thank God that you were counted worthy to be a target for Satan. Acts chapter 5, verse 40, 41, and to him they agreed, and when uh, they had called the apostles and beaten them, uh, they commanded that they uh, should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go and they watched the Bible and they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his day. You ought to be thankful. Uh, there are some advantages to the attacks that come from Satan because uh, there is something about being a target that you ought to be thankful that God has used you to be a target for Satan. Right. There are some advantages of the attacks. But, but here, here's the problem with most Christians. When, when folk throw dirt at us, We want to throw their back. <laughs> and 
You heard the story of the farmer uh, who had a mule that uh, fell into a deep way. And when they tried to put him out, the mule was too heavy and, and the well was too deep. So he called his two boys and he made the sad decision that uh, we're going to have to bury this mule in the way. And so the story says that uh, as they start to shovel the dirt on the mule, uh, the mule was afraid and he could hear him in the well uh, bringing and as he started to shovel dirt on the mule, the mule would shake the dirt off and stomp it under his feet. And the more dirt they shovel on the mule, uh, the mule would shake the dirt off of his shoulder and, and stomp it under his feet. And before they realized it, uh, the mule had, had stomped enough dirt under his feet until he had made his way up, out of the well. What, I, what I'm trying to get you to understand is when, when folk throw dirt at you, when folk try to throw dirt on you, when your haters come at you, shake it off, stomp it under your feet. And God will allow you to rise above. You hate us, he'll allow you to rise above. The bitterness and the envy, he will allow you to rise above. Then all you got to do is shake it off. Stop it. Under your feet. When you shake the haters off, you rise above everything. They try to, young folk, uh, this is a lesson for you. Because, see, you know, uh, in, 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 in your circles, uh, and there, there are more, uh, our streets have been painted more uh, in, in the last uh, 20 or 30 years or longer with the blood of our young black men and even now our young girls. Because folk, I don't know how to settle sister because of words. We don't know how to settle our differences with learning how to let some stuff go. Listen, words can't define you. When, when folk come at you, when, when they try to hang on you, shake it out. They can't define. When, 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 when folk come at you and say stuff and try to put you down in school, listen, what you ought to say to them, listen, uh, you ought to come back at them with, well, uh, since you trying uh, to banter me, you must want to be me. <laughs> now, don't, don't, don't let folk bring you down with words. Shake that stuff off. And we, we got to learn that in the church. We uh, folks say stuff, and we are leaving the church. Because of what somebody else said. If you know who you are, it don't matter what folks say. Shake that stuff off. Put it under your feet. And let God help you rise above the mess. Yes. 
conditions and conditions to the hand. He says, if the folk are saying all kind of stuff against you falsely, for my sake, make sure it is a lie and they hate on you because you being righteous for the sake of Christ. Sometimes some stuff folks say about us is true and it ain't got nothing to do with being righteous with being on Christ's side. So, when, 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 when folks say stuff about you, never check yourself and make sure that everything is, because see, you and I never lie. See, I knew y'all were like this. First Peter chapter 4, verse 14. If he be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you, and that God uh, he is evil spoken of, but on your God he is glorified. There are advantages to the attacks. But we better make sure that the attacks are false. Let folk go and talk. Let folk about. Let folk go and say their evil stuff about you. So, what's that now? Say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I don't care what you say about me because I'm striving to do and as long as you are saying stuff, crazy stuff about me that's false and it's because of what I'm doing for Christ, I don't care what you say. Learn not to throw dirt back and forth when folk throw dirt at you. Because the dirt will help you Eventually, rise above what they say. Well, let me let me hasten up. He says, not only should we examine some of the advantages of the text, but then we we see the abundance from the text. The Bible says in verse twenty. Rejoice and be exceeding. Jump for joy is the idea. Blame for great. There it is. Abundant, plenteous is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. As Christians, we should rejoice. Count it as a privilege when we are attacked by Satan because we have an abundant reward in heaven. Because the prophets who foretold of Christ and the gospel endured the same afflictions. They tried to bury Joseph with accusations, but he rose above it to become the second man behind Pharaoh. They tried to throw dirt on Daniel and try to have him slain, but he ended up having a sleepover in the lion's den. So rejoice because uh, you're in good company. First Peter uh, chapter 4, verse 13, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Second Corinthians 4, 15 uh, through 17, for all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but uh, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed 
day by day for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So what I came to say to you on this day, don't try to hinder your haters, but let your haters help you. Because haters will help you grow because we grow through what we go through. Haters will help you to be humble because you will soon discover, as did Paul, that God's grace is sufficient. Haters will help you be stronger because you will never know the strength of your faith until your faith has been tested. Uh, if the, uh, when you recognize the advantages of the attacks and the abundance that comes from the attacks, it will reveal how you can be helped by your haters. Don't get all bent out of shape when, when folks start saying stuff that they know you.
See, I know a whole lot of y'all background, and I know what would have happened with some of y'all. I know my background. But he, he took all of it. For my sake. For your sake. And that's why he says here on the sermon, in the sermon uh, on the mount, when you learn how to take all that stuff that I took, you're going to be blessed. They, they killed me, they crucified me on the cross. And they thought it was over. But what they didn't know is that three days later, and I tried to tell them before they put if I be lifted up, I'll draw men unto me. I tried to tell them before they did it, they wouldn't listen. <laughs> then I got it. And, and now I'm sitting at the right hand of the Father. And because God got me up, because I died for you, I can get you up out of whatever it is you're going through. And so what I'm trying, what Jesus said, is what I'm trying to get you to understand is that here in the Beatitudes, if, if you learn to do, if you learn to take what I do, you're going to be happy. Gonna be blessed. Yeah, it ain't easy. It's gonna be hard. Because, see, you know, when, when folk, and especially when you know it ain't true, when, when, when folk doing stuff that's wrong, that, that, that old man wanna take over. And you wanna get back at folk. And, and you know, stuff about to pop off. <laughs> but you got to quickly think in the back of your mind, okay, as long as I can remember, this is for my good. I'm going to be happy. Yeah, right. All I need to do is just let folks keep talking. The more you talk, the more I'm going to be blessed. Yeah. You can go about your thing. Somebody, somebody, you write that. You should right there because folk been saying stuff, doing stuff, and you ain't handled it right. You ain't dealt with it. You ain't looked at it as being a blessing. You been looking at it from the standpoint of, no, hold on. You done wrote up on the wrong one. So you can't have that attitude. You gotta change that attitude. And, and there's a folk in the church. See, a lot of us got issues with each other. Folk, folk, folk say stuff, and, and sometimes uh, folk don't mean on your will, but sometimes the way stuff come out and come out wrong, and we take it wrong, and we don't deal with it well. And then we want to go back. You can't do that. You can't do it. You can't do it. And, 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 and if stuff they say is true, even though it may not have come out right, okay. Then, then, because, see, haters can help really in more than one way. Even if they tell you the truth, they can help you. Because it helps you realize, okay, that's, that's, that's something I need to work on for me. And then if they lie, they help you. Because they're blessing you. So it so can really help you too, way. But, 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 but that's, maybe that's where you are this morning. You, you struggle. You struggle right there. You, you don't. You can deal with situations well. What, what folk have been saying, what they've been knowing. Whether it's true or false, you can deal with it. Come on, ask for the help that you need. Ask for the prayers that you, that you need this morning of the righteous. Ask for the
prayers to help you to learn to be blessed from, from the brutality of those who hate Ask for the prayers of the righteous to help you remember that uh, I can rejoice in this because I got a great reward coming. You know, uh, after a while, might not be right around the corner. But when after a while I get here, <laughs> Lord have mercy, it's going to be some rejoicing. Maybe, maybe, maybe your, your request ought to be is to help you to be able to wait on the after a while. Keep on doing good. Keep on being an example. Keep on allowing Christ to be seen in you. And ask for the prayers of the righteous for strength to help you wait on your way out for a while. Somebody said this morning, you, you've not said yes to Jesus. He's bidding you come this morning to obey his glorious gospel. He wanted you to be here because uh, maybe Satan has been attacking you religiously. He's been hating on you, pulling you in all kinds of directions religiously and spiritually uh, trying to get you to uh, to follow the ways of the world. But you hear this morning because Jesus wants you to be here. Mm -hmm. Because he wants you to hear about the glorious gospel. Uh, the death, burial, and resurrection. The good news of how he died, was buried. Then three days later he got up out of the grave with all power in his hand. This is called the gospel. You do that by hearing the gospel. Romans 10, 17. Believe in that same Gospel, uh, Hebrews 11 6. Uh, Repent it, turn it from your way to God's way. Luke 13, 3 and 5. Confessing Christ to be the Son of God. Matthew 10, 32, 33. Acts chapter 8, verse 35 and following. Uh, be buried in the water grave baptism for the remission of sins. Acts 2, 38. Get up a brand new creature, a brand new creation. Be faithful unto them. And God will give you a brand. Everybody's coming. Somebody said, Somebody said, You need to come. Somebody, somebody is here and, and you've been struggling with, with dealing with hope. You, you, you hate us. It really happened. Stop. Looking at them as an enemy. Look on, look upon them as, as somebody who really happy. It's all rejoicing. And maybe you need help right there. Deal with folk on your back. Deal with folk on your job. Whatever the case might be. Come on. Get prayer. Once you do it, come on, do it just now. You sing this song of invitation. Say yes to me.